Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Good to see you guys. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Hope you're staying safe, taking good care of yourselves and others. And um, hope they can get a thumbs up or two that you guys can see me and, and hear me clearly. Uh, hello. Wow, we got some familiar faces as always. So happy to be with you guys today. Hey there, Annika from Houston. Um, Gian from Blue Ridge Mountain, North Carolina. Welcome back, you guys. It's awesome to get to speak with you again. Uh, and again, I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, thanks for tuning in live. I know some of you guys catch the uh, the replay after the live. Emily Ramsey, uh, hey, from London. Charles Green from NYC. Good stuff. I think you guys can hear me and see me okay. Uh, I'm excited to dive into how to develop star power in minutes with you guys and looking forward to showing you how to develop celebrity level charismatic confidence in minutes to be instantly memorable and launch your careers faster. It's fun to hang out with you guys again. And thank you, as always, to Backstage for putting this together. Uh, it's such a treat to be able to hang out with you guys like this. So looking forward to diving in. And chatting with you guys, getting to hang out a little bit after the talk. And uh, yeah, thank you as always to um, you guys, Casey Mink and Katie Menard for, for all of your help with this. I know that um, we're all so busy these days. So yeah, cool. Thank you again. Uh, been collaborating with Backstage for many uh, years, as you guys know. And uh, all my articles are archived, and you can read them all on Backstage. Uh, so thank you guys for taking a look at them and keep those questions tight, you guys. I'm going to get to we're going to get to talk a little bit later, but really happy to see you and see the familiar faces. And my name is Joseph Perlman. Uh, at my studio, Perlman Acting Academy, we help actors launch their careers faster reach Oscar level work on set and award level work as well too. And at my studio, something that I believe and we believe as a community that you guys can do anything, but you can launch your careers faster and with less effort when you're lit up with fun, when you're literally under the influence of maximum fun in your bodies. And uh, we have live online Zoom classes from Hollywood to anywhere in the world, from beginners to celebrities. And you guys are all welcome to attend a free audit, watch a class if you haven't already. Come and watch our uh, celebrity level actors getting a workout uh, every week on currently casting major film and TV auditions and the actual shows that they're on. We have Game of Thrones actors at the studio, actors uh, in some of the biggest uh, streaming and network shows like uh, Last Kingdom. And we invite you guys to come watch and you can send an email to us at www.josephperlman.com, P-E-A-R-L-M-A-N.com and send a request and our studio manager will set you up with a free audit. So come and watch and yeah, and follow us on Instagram uh, at Joseph Perlman. So here we go, let's dive in. How did, oh, we got folks here from Morocco. Austria, the Gates, I know you. <laughs> cool, April, thank you so much. All right, hey, you guys, what is star power? Uh, what is star power? Many folks in the industry call it, um, you know, the it factor, that something extra, you know, that, that thing, uh, sh she's got it or he's got it. What, what is that thing? Let's talk about that for a little bit. Think of the people who really shake the room when they enter. You know, what do they do? Tell me, you guys, you know, put it in the chat. What do they do? What is that thing? What is that little bit extra? I think they affect change. E-F-F-E-C-T change. Affect change. They have impact. And the difference between good and great, the difference between good and great, having sort of okay impact and standing out okay and being memorable okay and really shaking the ground and shaking the room when you enter is slight. It's that little bit extra. 
and it's entering every room you walk into emotionally full and lit up. Exactly. I just, it was, um, that's right, Sarah, lit up with fun and energy. Totally. Uh, welcome, Sarah. Good to see you. Um, yeah, the difference between good and great is slight. It's that little bit extra. It's walking into every room emotionally lit up with maximum fun, filled up. You know, lit up with lit up with what? Um, really lit up with anything, but the best thing possible is to be lit up with maximum fun under the influence of drunk on, intoxicated on as much fun as you can possibly have. And it's very, it's kind of binary. If somebody, it's the same with acting. I've talked about it before, you guys, is how do you know it's working? One of the things, great actors know the work is great because you guys feel it. Not because somebody gives you a playback or half your class you're watching, uh, you know, like, like your playback or somebody gives you a critique. You know it's great because it's fun. And your version of fun might be alive or free or, you know, uh, cathartic or invigorated. And I, I said earlier, you guys can do a lot with that fun. You can launch your careers faster with less effort. And you can do almost anything faster when you're under the influence of it. Remember that anything capable of being done, you can do. That's why what we're all trying to do here, what you guys are trying to do, is a very doable thing. It's not, a, it's not, not doable. Anything that's capable of being done, um, you can do whether that's launching an A-list career or winning an award like an Oscar. And the result is always, uh, with that level of fun, unshakable, ironclad confidence. And if you ask the average audience member, I'm going to have so much fun hanging out with you guys in a second because all my favorite people are here. If you ask the average audience member, what was the difference between a good actor and a great actor they'll give you a variety of answers. Think about it yourselves for a second. Like, what's the difference between, you know, good and great? Ben Kingsley talks about it and talked about it when he was younger and um, sneaking into the RSC to watch performances and getting right up close, getting right up to the edge of the stage and watching actors like Laurence Olivier and feeling the intensity of the work of the work so much that he felt like he was going to pass out in the audience. You know, it's that feeling in your chest. You're starting to lose your breath a little bit with it. They'll give you a bunch of answers. The great actor, some people will say, had more energy, more confidence, seemed more buoyant, was funnier, was more engaging. Um, I think about it in terms of, I like what Stella Adler said. She said, the talent is in the choices and it's the ability with acting to make dangerous choices um, that separates the good actors from the great actors. And we've talked about this before, and it's worth mentioning again, is that as Martin Landau said, um, in life, we don't speak everything we feel. In a well-written script, what people say to each other, the dialogue, the text, is only what a character is willing to reveal. It's only what they're willing to share. The 90% he or she isn't willing to share is what we do for a living. Does that make sense? So stop thinking that in the interest of obey, you know, in the interest of doing justice to a writer, that you guys have to emotionally obey the text. So it's your ability to make dangerous acting choices. Um, that's that difference between good acting and great acting. And I did a video of, uh, about it some weeks ago, and you guys can check it out on Backstage's YouTube channel. It was, a fun, it was uh, fun for me to do it with you guys, and hope it was fun for you. Essentially, all these answers, you know, what's the difference between good and great, originate with self-confidence and self-assurance, okay? That's what we see on the outside. Confidence is like fueling something up um, with electricity, uh, with energy, fueling a car. You need it if you're trying to get somewhere, food, um, if you're going on a hike, if you're doing something physically vigorous. Imagine the fun and sheer awesomeness of possessing the innate ability to radiate charismatic, impactful confidence within seconds, as easily as flipping a light switch on, okay? As easily as just turning on a switch and apply it to any life challenge or situation. I don't want to just help you guys with 
um, industry related stuff, although that is probably what's most important to you. But you can use what I'm talking about for absolutely anything in your personal lives. In addition to working with, with you guys, with performing artists of all levels, with musicians, uh, singer songwriters, comedians, actors, I also help uh, world leaders, CEOs, uh, politicians, executives, lawyers, other industry leaders, uh, healthcare leaders, uh, Doctors Without Borders, World Health Organization, develop charismatic confidence within minutes for maximum impact on their audiences. And the most memorable personalities in my life, you guys, I can probably count on one hand. Think of the people who truly moved you in your lives, the teachers, the speakers, um, they're unfortunately few and far between. I hope they're, they're more for you. But when I was younger, I, I really can remember those men and women. Um, I was able to really, they were so memorable. I was able to really put them in my pocket and have a feeling for who they were, their personality. I talked with you guys about this, this concept of leaving a tip. It came from a story Billy Crystal told me years ago about what is it to leave a tip? He was performing a, a concert in the 80s for a big producer. It was a big show. Um, he was excited. The producer was there. The audience loved it. The producer came backstage and said, Billy, thanks for inviting me. And Billy said, what'd you think? And he said, the audience loved it. It was a lot of fun. But Billy, it didn't work for me because I didn't get a sense of who you were. You didn't leave a tip. What is a tip? It's that little bit extra that you leave. It's that little extra you, 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 know, you, you, you leave in a restaurant uh, because somebody, somebody did a little bit extra. You should always tip, but you leave even more. That tip is that thumbprint of your personality. It's always your job to bring yourselves to the performance, okay? To bring you to the performance. That doesn't mean playing with playing yourself, but it means getting that you cannot create a humanity and you can't create a soul that's more interesting than your own, okay? So um, the most memorable personality speeches or presentations are the ones where the, present, uh, the presenter radiated their true lit up and unrestrained selves outwards, outwards in a seemingly effortless manner to radiate, to magnify their inner self, their inner personality, with fun outwards in an effortless manner. And I've been arming you guys, a lot of you guys watching and, and many other clients for years with a wildly effective tool to handle anything that life throws your way, whether it's an audition, whether it's on set, um, whether it's in a pitch meeting, whether a general meeting, a virtual general or an in-person general um, and handle it with remarkable ease and fun. And it's called the hook. Is that familiar to some of you guys who have been a part of the work recently? The hook. What's the hook? It's one of the most fun things that you guys remember from the work that we do together. You know, what is the hook? The hook is designed to spark a rocket blast of confidence in seconds, okay? The difference between good and great in acting and in life is the ability to start, to walk into every, any room, to start any acting performance um, emotionally full instead of empty, emotionally lit up. And there's a lot of sort of confusing techniques that are, can be kind of heady, but the most direct way to light up to an emotion in one second is by using a hook. And the interesting thing about a hook, as you guys know, it's not something you can just figure out or guess because it's going to run far away from you. It's something that's distilled. It's the product of, of what I like to say, 99 questions, 99 emotional questions that I ask you guys. Um, and, it's, and it's one of the most fun things when we find it. And we always find it. It's the thing that lights you up emotionally in one second. It's the thing that we find that makes it so you don't have to act um, or you don't have to worry about your presentation. So the hook is designed to spark a rocket blast of, con of confidence within seconds. Yes, some of you guys know exactly what we're talking about here with the hook. And I help you guys, I help my clients ignite themselves with this magnetic attractive confidence um, called a hook. And it's to guarantee a win for any scenario, auditions, 
every scene of your performance, an award ceremony presentation. Um, I work with TED Talk presenters, so starting a TED Talk, um, doing an interview, hosting gigs, pitch meetings, UN speeches, interviews, debates, asking for a raise, a first date, literally anything, you guys. And here's what a hook is. We're gonna, we're gonna break it down. A hook is a deeply emotional and improvisational body attitude or opinion, okay? It's cultivated within your body and then owned verbally. It's designed to instantly light you up emotionally within seconds and propel you to the phenomenally successful completion of any task. Actors like Daniel Day-Lewis work this way. Music can be a hook. Does that make sense? Um, what is the thing that triggers a full emotional light up? Daniel Day-Lewis famously hooked into his role in Gangs of New York as the butcher by listening to certain Eminem songs, okay? Really, really cool. So a hook is a deeply emotional, improvisational body attitude or opinion that's cultivated inside your body and then owned verbally. And I'll give you an example. It's not some screwy acting technique, okay? It's, it's how we actually work as people. So here's the example. Let's say you're in a city or you're in a car and somebody just slams into you, whether they're on foot or whether they're, they, they almost crash into you in the car. And it's a very intense experience. And inside of your body, you feel this red flash coming up through your crotch, up your stomach, up your chest. And inside your body, you're saying, holy shit, or what the F? But you didn't say it out loud. Where did you guys say it? Anybody? Where did you say those words? And you're lit up with, holy, you know, and then you see the person and you're, you know, you say, you having a good day? <laughs> Everything okay? But you really mean, what the F were you thinking? So you guys, this is what we do. That's what Martin Landau was talking about. The things we feel inside of ourselves. Um, these opinions, these attitudes in our bodies are very different than the words we're speaking. And at least a lot of my training, I don't know about a lot of your training, is in emotionally obeying sort of, in, took back to acting again, <laughs> it's hard to get away from it here, is in emotionally obeying the text, is finding an, an intention, an objective, something like what the author suggested. But we were never told in our conservatory, in our drama school experience or our training, that we should actually adopt an attitude, an emotion, an opinion that may be directly against the grain from what the text is suggesting, because that's the way it is in life. Um, so that's what a hook is. Creating physical confidence inside of your body leads to mental and emotional confidence. Just as your words become your reality, confidence in your body develops into internal self-sustaining confidence that has sudden impact and immediately starts to affect change in your audience. So think about it like this, you guys. Confidence is self-sustaining. When you are lit up with something fun, um, it's gonna have a half-life. It's not just gonna turn off. It's gonna start to go on its own. That's why you, have, you don't have to exert any effort um, when you're walking in a room, when you're acting, when you're present, when you're presenting, when you're doing an interview, when you're pitching, etc. There's no effort that's required. And that is also one of the qualities, in addition to fun, for star power to be, to be lit up with something that's magnetic and radiant, is it's effortless. You do not have to work at it. Your best acting should feel as easy as if you were doing nothing other than playing yourself, okay? But you're starting emotionally full. Think about it like this. Star power, acting, walking in a room, being instantly magnetic, having that it factor. You're doing something before you walk in a room. You're not doing it when you walk in a room. And I'll give you an example of this. I love using this example. And this is an example of before I walk into a room, it's sort of as if you're um, stoking an emotion in your body with a bellows. I've used this example before and you're blowing on it. And the coal, what happens to the coal? It gets hotter, it gets redder. And there's this like red hot emotion somewhere in your body, your leg, your foot, your heart, your head. And then when you walk in 
You don't have to do anything anymore, okay? You throw the bellows out. You walk in and enjoy being lit up. And so just as your words become your reality, confidence in your body develops into internal self-sustaining confidence, like I said, and it has sudden impact and it starts to immediately affect change in your audience, to bring about change in your audience. The power of the hook orbits around the notion that your words directly create, shape and alter your reality. Your words create your reality. It's something we don't think about. And I think we are, especially these days, as there's an acceler as there's like an emotional acceleration to the world, maybe because of what we're all going through, um, we don't realize sometimes that our words are a medium for creation. We think of paint and we think of, but you, we use our words to create and we use our emotional words to create genius to create beautiful works of art. Um, so the power of the hook orbits around the notion that your words directly create and shape and alter your reality so that you instantly become and own what you are saying and you change the world around you. You start to change things around you um, when you speak things out loud, emotional things. Your hook needs to be so emotionally powerful and concise that when you say it, you feel as though your whole being is ignited, okay? Ignited on what? Ignited on fun. I read you that Baudelaire poem from Long Day's Journey into Night. Life is just this, like, the fun challenge is to always be drunken, okay? Drunken on love, drunken on words, drunken on wine, drunken on friends, drunken on anything, on, on the outdoors, but to be always lit up and to be always drunken. So... It needs to be so emotionally powerful and concise that when you say it, your whole body is ignited. And when you start speaking, you do so lit up and on fire. Okay. Those are the people that I remember. That's the star power that, that I see. You know, um, not every person who's famous has star power, by the way. And some of the best hooks can be expressed in five words or less. And it'll feel like you've started a small fire inside of you when you say it out loud. They start as emotions located in the body. Um, and again, you guys, you are so welcome if you haven't already to come and watch the actors distilling it and putting it into their bodies and starting to light up, you know, in our classes every week. And you can take them, jump in from anywhere in the world. So there's never a one size fits all approach to finding it, to finding a hook. It's born out of your singular passion and raw emotion for the task at hand and your desire for maximum impact on your audience. Um, you know, there's a certain, I don't know why you guys do this. Um, you know, I hope that you all truly love acting because you, you can't do this if you don't truly love acting, but there's, there's somewhat of a sort of a, a surprise or a shock value or a ha ha kind of a thing. It's, it's why some of us do this. It's, it's, to, to really um, lift people's asses two inches off their chairs when you're working, you know, to hold them there two inches off the ground. What a cool thing to be able to do. So there's never a one size fits all approach to find your, finding your hook. And a hook gives you a type of organic confidence to help power you easily and with great fun through any life challenge you're facing. And it also helps you to like launch your own sense of natural confidence rather than cultivating a forced energy, a forced, like, look at me, a forced sense of um, pleasing or please find me interesting. A hook lights the flames of internal power in a way that is fun for you. And I'll tell you over the years, you guys, it's helped to get people that I've worked with out of bed in the morning. Okay. Especially in sometimes like these, it's helped them win an Oscar. It's helped them speak in front of the UN. It's helped some of them survive the Taliban attract the love of their life, attract the love of their life, nail huge job interviews, successfully pitch their startup and get funded or rally their team. And there are three results that this level of confidence using a hook will get you. People will fall in love with you. They'll find something they imagine no one had ever seen um, from that beautiful Westworld quote I shared with you, something they fall in love with. And it'll give them a glimpse of who they could be. So people will fall in love with you. Two, you'll get exactly what you want 
And three, you'll be memorable. And I want to share with you a sort of rubber meets the road story of helping a really, really cool person find a hook recently. And this was um, just, just recently. So exciting to, um, to over the years and now bring the work I do uh, to Asia. Uh, we have this incredible uh, Japanese audience in class uh, every week, every Tuesday. And we have over 30 celebrity actors in this class. And one of the exciting things that we do is that we, we also work with people who are not actors, just like you guys know at the studio. We can work on the you, the, the you aspect that's walking in the room. How are you bringing yourself in the room? How are you bringing yourself into a, a general meeting? Um, so it was really fun because in the class on Tuesday, um, I coached a TED Talk presentation. I worked with a venture capitalist to get funding. And I worked with a incredibly, incredibly high-level, well-known Japanese producer um, to pitch an agent to pitch a, a manager to get a celebrity client into his film. And I'm not going to give all the details on that, but one of the exciting things um, that we did was this and all the things that he had to say about the film were really cool, but there was something missing that we worked on. It was um, the him part of the equation. So after asking about 99 questions and getting him to light up about what got him out of bed in the morning? What was exciting for him? What did he believe in? What did he connect to? Um, we went to an, a very exciting point in somebody's life or career. We went to the end, okay? And I'll tell you this right now, you guys, the secret is in the end. And we went to the end. And the end was him actually winning the Oscar award for this film many months or years later. And we captured the emotion in the end of that, captured the emotion in the end, that light up. And I asked him after all the work was over, and remember, you can't just figure out what your hook is in your head. You're never gonna get it. It's always gonna run away. But after the 99 questions, he distilled it. And I said, having won that Oscar with that award in your hand, what would you then say to that manager if you were to go into the meeting already having won the Oscar. And he said, I would want to come in and I would, he, his arms went out like this. And, I, and he said, I would want to give him a hug. And I said, well, what would you say? And he, he said, we did it. <laughs> we did it. And I said, go. And he started the simulation of the first meeting with that feeling of we did it. That's a hook, you guys. From that body, from that body attitude of giving him a hug, we did it, and he started the meeting, and it was electric. Okay, this is a major. This is a major producer. So it's this is sort of an example, a really fun example of its utility to basically show somebody in one second before you've said what you've had to say, in one second, um, to show them that you are that person, to show them to so they can see that potential. Um, maybe in a subconscious way, the moment you walk in the room. And the fuel of finding that hook is, the fire is fueled by allowing yourself and giving yourself permission to have maximum fun. There's zero effort involved. And one of the things that you have to do in order to discover that light up for yourself is you have to be willing to forget the original problem that you're working on. I can't quote it enough, but Einstein's quote is so emotionally impactful to me. He said, no problem can be solved using the same level of consciousness that created it. So you actors, everybody listening to this, you have to be willing, um, like the great artists, the great improvisational jazz pianists like Keith Jarrett, who's one of my favorites. He said, to do this work, you have to be willing to go out of your mind. You have to be insane because it's an impossible task, but you have to be willing to forget the original problem. You have to be willing to forget the plane of the original problem to leave the level of consciousness of what you know after you've done all the work, because it's, guess what? It's still in your body in order to travel to a whole other level of consciousness, like this producer actually having won the Oscar, even though he hasn't yet, but I promise you he will. Even though he hasn't yet, 
he had to leave the level of consciousness that he was in this meeting and he hadn't achieved this success and go to this other level of consciousness. And to do that, you have to be willing to forget the original problem. So, yeah. Again, I've mentioned this before. Once the pilot light of self-assurance has been lit, it tends to stay on by itself without any effort or energy on your part. The reason for this is that confidence, like other powerful emotional attitudes, is self-sustaining. Um, Philip Seymour Hoffman said this years ago in an interview in Movie Magazine, um, and I deeply miss Philip Seymour Hoffman. He, he probably one of the best, uh, one of the greatest. And he said that after all of the work that I did, after all the emotional work and the planting of the seeds, any role that I ever played when I got onto set, set, I didn't alter myself at all. I didn't change the way I talked. I didn't change the way I moved. I didn't do anything. Why didn't he do anything? He worked as if he was just playing himself because he trusted that the work he did uh, was powerful enough to take root and to grow inside of him and he didn't have to do anything. So this, you know, again, the topic of the conversation is how to cultivate star power in minutes. You can actually cultivate star power and develop it in seconds if you have that hook by putting it in your body. Um, and living in the end is a really, really powerful exercise, you guys, a really powerful exercise. I've talked about it um, in one of my other videos, how to teleport to an A-list career. And it's really fun to take away the problem, to start have a starting bias that you've already solved the problem that you want. Because if how you feel is what you get, um, how you feel now is what you get tomorrow, then you're going to be in this state of wanting something or, or kind of lack. But if you can go to the end and have the emotion that you would have at the end of it, which is very much in your control to have, it's going to help you get to that thing that you want faster. So if you find yourself in the waiting room of a job interview or, or driving to a pitch meeting or in the wings backstage expecting to you know, make your presentation, invoke your hook, put it in your body, light yourself up and empower, um, empower that light up. You know, it basically like light yourself up in one second. And yeah, I think, I think I might want to go to you guys right now because the next, you know, I, I can only do so much just me, I'm not working with you individually here. I would like to work with you individually. I'd like you to see the work that we're doing and to see the level of impact that these um, producers, actors, TED Talk presenters are having, uh, you know, with this work in their body. So it's like, how do you get under the influence of maximum fun? There's something very powerful about speaking out loud and using your words. Never solve a problem in your head. Never figure out how to do the speech, how to prep the interview, how to, um, you know, the award ceremony presentation. Never figure out what that hook is or how you're going to do it in your head. This has to be talked out loud. I see a lot of actors doing these backstory exercises on paper or sort of solving these major problems in your head. If you solve them in your head, they're just gonna be ideas. And when you discover something truly brilliant, your mind is gonna say, oh, but shouldn't it be like that? Or so stop, don't get stuck on ideas. Uh, I wanna hang with you guys because um, I miss the interaction sometimes when I'm talking like this, but um, please, please come and, you know, come and jump into a free audit and go to the website, www.josephperlman.com, P-E-A-R-L-M-A-N.com. Fill out the contact form and we'll get you guys in as soon as tonight or next week. We have uh, multiple classes a week, uh, including the Japanese class with um, pretty much some of the most awesome sort of celebrity actors in Asia in that class. So hope to welcome you guys. Let's see. I mean, uh, Victoria Broom, thank you. How does this apply for self-tape uh, For self -tape casting? It's the same thing. What I'm talking about, this star power, we are finding this hook for your acting pieces every single time. We're asking, you know, about 99 questions to figure out. So with your self-tape castings, I did a video on how to put together a winning, you know, how to guarantee a win on your next self-tape. The same thing applies. Your acting technique has no business in the final acting. It'll, it'll, 
You don't want your acting to smell like technique, okay? Think of your technique are seeds you plant before, scaffolding so you can kick it away. The difference between good and great, are you starting every acting scene, you guys, lit up emotionally, lit up, so lit up that you can then let it go and not know where it's gonna go. There's something really powerful in all of this talk, whether it's acting or speaking about like being okay with not knowing how it's gonna go. Joaquin Phoenix talks about, that's a space he's most comfortable in, is not knowing how it's gonna happen. So I never would never want you to guy, ever to have to say, oh, well, this didn't go the way I did it in class or it didn't go the way I did it at home. It's never gonna go the way you did it at home. Um, one of my favorite musicians, Robert Smith of The Cure has written on the bridge of his guitar, nothing is ever the same. David Bowie would intentionally never play any song the same, you guys. Nothing's ever the same. You think of your preparation for walking in a room, that star power sort of light up of yourself when you walk into a room or when you start acting. Think of it as this really fun emotional mixture that you sort of are mixing in a bucket and you're packing it with all, with all sorts of cool stuff. And then when it's time to sort of walk in the room or speak or act or present or interview, you're dropping that liquid um, at the top of a mountain. You're dropping it out of the bucket. And once it's released, it's going to forge a different way down the mountain every single time. You can no longer control anything when you start acting. And same with your self tapes, you guys. A lot of the self tapes now, um, when you're not in person, the production team and casting, they want a glimpse of your personality. So this is possibly more important because it's the first thing that they're connecting with before you start acting. Are you a fun person to play with? Again, is there no desperation? Uh, are you somebody that they can personally like? And to be able to walk into a room or to walk into a slate, or I think better than a slate, is to give 20 to 30 seconds a glimpse of your personality. And we work on those types of uh, additions to self-tapes at the studio, giving somebody a glimpse of your personality in an effortless way. Um, remember like, you know, when I was younger and just getting started um, doing more teaching, I've been teaching for a long time. I had a young Zoe Deschanel walk into my class and Amy Adams came into one of the classes and it was like, you know, there was just something so captivating, so magnetic. When speaking about Zoe Deschanel, it was like, she wasn't doing anything. There wasn't anything put on. We were definitely, I was being treated, the rest of the class was being treated when she walked into the room to the full strength of her personality, unedited, without giving a shit, um, because she was under the influence of fun. There's a certain sort of attitude of not giving a shit in that as well, too. So let's see. Jose, man, so great to see you. Um, uh, Jose, the getting stuck on ideas and working beyond those limits with you is so freeing, really a challenge to let go and trust. Thanks, man. It is like an honor and a joy to be able to work with you every week. Jose is uh, so many incredible things about what you do. So yes, thank you. Jose. Thank you for sharing that, Jose. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. Oh, Brooklyn. Yes. You said, I talked about having a video on how to start your acting career at any age. Are you still planning to do to have that? A hundred percent. I'm planning to have that. Don't worry. That's coming up. I promise. Um, we will be doing that. Yes. Uh, let's see, Donna Kelly, let's make sure I'm not, uh, good. Donna, yeah, oh, is it a good idea of asking family and friends for examples of when they saw me lit up and passionate when it was obvious I was unaware of myself? 100%, yeah, absolutely. You can ask your friends, but remember, I am not a fan. Not every actor should be getting feedback. Not every actor should be watching playback of themselves. That might be a whole video to do as well. There's certain actors where it's toxic to watch your playback because that's a result. What's more important is that you know the work is great. You know you're lit up because you're having fun. It's effortless. You're having instant impact and it feels so completely like you, your version of it. These are the sort of four um, things that you feel when I mean, it's great. So it can't hurt to ask them, but it's better to trust how you feel uh, because they're, they're, I said Meryl Streep and Javier Bardem and Reese Witherspoon and Johnny Depp, they know to never watch their performances. So I don't believe actors should be force fed their performances because it can do more to shut you down. You should be able to watch your performances if you want to, if you can look at it like an editor, but just know 
that what you're watching, the feedback that you're getting from people is the result. And we're more interested in how it feels because that's where you retain your power, not in what other people say about it. Because as, as one of my good friends and, and, and fellow coaches at my studio, Alex Ashinger, writer, producer, uh, actor says, you cannot control what other people see. Okay, this is a big thing that's come up this week in classes. So you guys, stop trying to control what other people see. You think Jack White, the musicians, the musician Jack White, um, whether he was with Meg at the time or, or solo, do you, think he, do you think he cared what people thought of him? Do you think he was concerned with um, trying to control what people saw? No, he was lit up uh, with something ecstatic and radiating it and people took whatever they want from it. So, so you can't control what people see. So take it off your plate. I'm a big fan of not loading you guys up with a whole bunch of crap that you have to do um, because it's like, you know, everybody has an opinion about it. I'm more interested in how do we clear the desk to create room for the fun, for more fun than we ever knew was possible. Let's see here. Uh, Angela, good to see you. Um, yeah, it, it, let's see. Liam, in my opinion, it is the purpose on which you are watching the performances on that is not ideal. If you're genuinely finding out watching your performance, yeah. And here's what the cool thing is, is actually working, doing the acting with you guys um, via video like this is so cool because we're not watching playback, but we're watching in real time to see if the work is connecting through the camera and you're able to put yourself and have impact um, through your partner's screen and through your audience's screen without watching playback. A lot of actors are great in the room, but they don't connect on camera. So one of the awesome things about working via video with you guys is we can see, like I said, real time if it's working. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see, Mian, I think, Mian, eh? Oh, I am not the only one that thought of this. I thought not be able to rewatch my performances is something bad. No, not, do never convince somebody that just because you can't watch your performances that there's something wrong with you, you guys. Like I said, it can be downright toxic to watch yourself. Javier Bardem says, I never watch myself. I can't look at that nose, that face, that, you know, he's like, you, you, Part of being a great actor is not getting comfortable with watching yourself. It's a great tool. Think of it as a spice. If somebody is seeing something technical that you can't see, it's great to look at, but not to make a fetish out of, okay? Uh, that, is not how, that is not becoming a great actor, is getting comfortable um, with that. Uh, let's see. Angela, I do not watch too many playbacks of my work. I'd rather be in the moment. No director is required that I do. I have only, yes, absolutely. You, watching your dailies should not be a requirement because you can really tank performances. Um, let's see. Ah, Cinda, yeah, having a hook really does make you come alive. A lot of the actors here in the chat, uh, we've been working together. Some of, some of you guys have been working together for up to 10 years and you're the practitioners of this. So you're the people that I, I really do want this wonderful backstage audience to hear from. So let's see, uh, RT, hey Joseph, such great advice as always, thank you. Um, all I care is that it's useful for you guys and that it has utility. Any tips on holding emotion back? Have it simmering without having to show it? Yes, that's what a hook is doing. It's not about, um, there's a lot that's simmering. Remember, with a hook, we're not trying to get at an emotional destination. That is not what we're trying to do. A hook, um, automatically simmers when you bring it to the speech you're doing so that the text will automatically restrain it. Think of the text as a container for it. Does that make sense? And the hook is like a spectrum of a hundred or a thousand emotions. Remember the beautiful Bob Dylan quote I shared with you guys some time ago. And Bob Dylan said this. He said, an artist has to be careful never really to arrive at a place where he or she feels like they're at somewhere, like emotionally. He said, you have to be in this place of becoming. And as long as you stay in this place of becoming, as long as you stay in this place of becoming, um, everything's gonna, like basically everything will work out beautifully to stay in this place of becoming. So yeah, the hook is not about arriving at an emotional destination. And the hook doesn't have to be massive. It doesn't have to be explosive. And you think about it is that like, before you walk into a room and have a civilized or uncivilized conversation, you could literally be hanging from the ceiling naked with peanut butter on you and you know doing some crazy stuff. And when you walk in, nobody's gonna know what you did before. They're gonna see what that insane event did to you emotionally. 
and it's going to throw them off balance because you were thrown off balance. So don't mistake the hook for what people are going to see. That's why I say stop trying to control what other people see. That is part of making dangerous choices, both in career presentation, sort of star power type of situations where you're, um, you know, doing an awards presentation or acting is the ability to not emotionally obey, the ability to solve a problem of how to play the scene from a whole other level of consciousness. And it means ultimately when you've done all the craft work and the line by line and opened up and explored the house of behavior, it's packing it up and forgetting it in your head to discover something truly brilliant that no one had ever thought of and to bring that emotion back into it. Um, so welcome, Ian. And yeah, good. Um, Donna Kelly, Joseph, I love the work and it's fun almost feeding me. You've helped me get out of the notion, out of the audition room and onto the set. Thanks again. Ah, oh, that's brilliant, Donna. Congratulations. Freaking awesome. <laughs> Peanut butter. Yes, exactly. Don't be afraid to look like an asshole or be a freak. Your personal, whatever insane thing that you do to prepare is nobody's business, right? And the more you can throw yourself off balance in finding your hook, the more you're going to throw an audience's minds off balance, an audience's mind off balance, and the more they're going to remember you guys. So don't be afraid to look like an asshole or be a freak. It's what I tell the actors in the um, improv warm-up prior to class, you guys. Like, don't be afraid to look like an asshole or be a freak. You be the wonderful, civilized, you know, people, but don't be afraid to push into the edge of madness, you know, in your preparation. We are all... As I said, we are all human animals capable of relating and identifying with an infinite amount of experience. Um, and no, peanut butter in my body is not an exciting thing. I was using a ridiculous example. Uh, <laughs> what is your process? What is your process when you first get a script, Allie Marie? Man, that could be a good one. That could be a good one too. Um, a, a good one. Let's say first getting a script. Yeah, I might wanna, yeah. First getting a script, um, it's okay. Uh, watch the video I did on how to memorize faster with less effort. It's a fun one. It's based on Anthony Hopkins' approach. Um, don't have to memorize to start doing the work. But what you definitely want to do is you want to like read that script. You want to read that script through and understand. Make sure you understand and get everything. It's called the line by line work. Know what you're saying. You know, know what's going on. And then you want to put it down. And whether it's an audition script or one of my clients booked the lead in Ridley Scott's last movie, it's the same process. Um, you read the script, you know, read it again if you want to, and you want to be very clear about what's the structure. Ask yourself, what's the structure that I get to go crazy inside, okay? What's the structure that I get to go crazy inside? Is it drama? Is it comedy? Um, is it feature film? How do people behave? And it's very important to know and a lot of actors don't know this, that your stage directions in the script and your character description, character description wasn't even written by production. It was written by breakdown services or casting to help you understand the world of the piece. Your stage directions and your character descriptions were never your acting instructions. It was never for you to obey. So let it go. And it's kind of fun to ask yourself, what do I not want to do? How can I how can I start thinking about how I'm gonna kick the reference point away so that when somebody sees this, they're not gonna see anything that they've ever seen before. And to do that, you need to figure out what you're not gonna do. What's the trap? What is every other actor gonna to do to please a, a casting director to obey? And then, um, then you're gonna go on an exploration, an out loud exploration of character. And just know that all the, these are the starting points, you know? Um, I've done some other videos in the past on, on you know, doing a, a cold read, creating a winning cold read where I go further into what to do, but your work should be out loud. And you know, it's kind of funny, like talking out loud, it has a stigma. Do you know what I'm saying? Do you guys ever feel weird about talking out loud? I, I hope you start to feel less weird about it. But I kind of feel that 100% of your acting work should be done out loud, not in your head and not, in, not on paper. It's how you bring the imagination into experience. It should be talked out loud. And I think it's important to find a place where you can you know, get your freak on and be able to talk out loud without you know, bothering somebody, uh, whether it's your car, whether it's taking a walk somewhere in the woods. Um, talking out loud is really, really important. Speak it out loud. Cool. 
Uh, what advice for starting? I'm gonna, we're gonna stop in just a second. I just wanna thank you guys again so much. It's so much fun to get to hang with you guys and speak with you guys. I hope to see you in the uh, classes. Um, everyone at Backstage, uh, Casey, Katie, you guys are so wonderful. Thank you for everything that you do. And um, yeah, I, I think the most important thing for a child actor is to cultivate the love of acting and to never lose it and to get off of the results and to basically make sure that you're doing it because it's a joy, that it feels awesome. Like acting should be the best feeling thing that you can do. The purpose of acting is to have maximum fun. Okay, are you doing it because of that? Because if you're not doing it because of that, it's gonna be a long haul, okay? So find a way to do it every week, okay? Find a way to act every week. It's easy to grab somebody, it's free via video to grab someone from anywhere in the world and read something. There's such a fun in reading dialogue out loud. And the last thing I'm gonna say is this, you guys, I hear this a lot from those auditing, Joseph, this work is so fun, how do I do it on my own? But how can I do it on my own? You guys, most of this you can, you can talk out loud and do on your own, but the first time you come into a class on set, an audition, make a presentation, should never be the first time you speak it out loud with somebody. It's easy to grab somebody, like I said, from anywhere in the world and just talk it out loud. So um, I hope you guys leave with many uh, fun things. But just one thing I want to leave you with is don't be afraid, permission to talk out loud, to speak your joys and your passions out loud um, and not give a crap and not be afraid, like I said, to look like an asshole or to be a freak uh, with it. And uh, I can't wait until the next time we get to meet and uh, most likely two weeks from today, all of the great ideas you guys are suggesting, uh, it would be my honor to do those videos, uh, provided it's a good fit and fun for backstage. And um, take care of, you guys, take care of yourselves. There are like multiple realities going on. There's the reality of what we're all sort of dealing with collectively, and that's you know all the time anyway. And then there's other realities that you can also burn through the fog of any stress, any anxiety. Um, that you're having about what's going on in the world. You can do it in one second, okay? And then that is your new reality. Does that make sense? So get control, you know, sort of take control of these thoughts that might be hurting you and outfund them with more powerful, more fun emotions. Burn through the fog of that stuff. Love you guys. Um, so, so fun to see, see those of you we've been working with for a while. And um, yeah, can't wait to see you guys next time. Be well. And uh, take care.